If I'm using project management, I have the option of using project budget control, which means that for certain transactions based on what's set up, I can get an error warning if I'm over budget. So let's have a look at these parameters. So if I go into procurement, uh, project management and accounting parameters, if I come down to cost control, what I'll see here is that use budget control is turned on. Now, in this particular case, there's a few optional parameters that we can have a look at. For example, do I want to tr uh, track just costs or do I want to track revenue? Usually this is probably, if you're doing budget control, it's probably a cost uh, mechanism. Do I want to allow overruns or do a warning um, or stop them altogether? Now this is something to really consider um, based on transaction types because if you can't purchase, you um, might cause operational issues, for example. You can set a user group if you want people to override, for example. Um, you could allow budget control outside the project hierarchy, so you could ignore um, uh, sub-projects, uh, parent projects, for example, and stuff like that. Um, how you want to control it, so different period options in terms of how the budget is split. Um, do you want to allow carrying forward budget so that from one period to the next, um, if there was negative in one, is it allowed to override the next, for example? Um, so those are these options in terms of carried forwards and allowed negatives, for example. Last one here is to check um, a document line and save. Now. Um, this one will trigger the warning, for example, if I put in a purchase order and I save the purchase order line, the budget uh, will kick in. Now, what we also need to look at is the cost commitments in terms of what documents do we want the budget control triggered at. So in this particular case, we could say we want it just on purchase order. Um, yeah, which is probably what you want to do if you're controlling costs. You might want to control it at purchase order before you get the invoice because if you've already got the goods and your invoice for them, it uh, might be a bit too late to check for budget, for example. But you could do it at, at requisition, for example. Now, it's also worth noting that while these are on the pro uh, project management accounting parameters, when you create a new project, so let's go and create a new project. Um, so let's say that this is uh, my investment project, so invest uh, 12, for example, and I'll say it's an investment, so we'll say OK. Now, when the project is created, you'll notice that there's a fast tab here which is project, uh, budget, and forecast, and those parameters are copied across here. So you'll see that it says allow overrun, for example. Now, if you go and change, um, so let's just save this project, so uh, project 12, for example. So if I go and change my overall uh, parameters, so we'll go into cost control, and then we'll say we'll produce a warning now. So if there's overruns, just warn, but still allow them to process. If I go back to my project, then um, that parameter won't automatically inherit here. So this, these parameters are now co controlled individually at the project. So something to keep in mind if you are changing the overall project management accounting parameters, it's only going to apply for new projects when they're created. In existing projects, you might need to go and edit these if that's an overall company policy you're changing, for example. So that's a quick overview of where you're going to find these in some follow-up videos. We'll have a look at the effect of 